I should have yeah. posted. Um, um, Makasaysayang uh, umaga sa aking mga estudyante sa public history. This is a minor class in the history department of the De La Salle University. And I am the instructor of this class, uh, Xiao Chua, is a public historian, naturally. What's the title uh, of the course? Uh, public history. It's a minor class. Uh, one of the first public history classes, formal public history classes in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. first one I also created for the Department of Mass Communications in 2018 in UP. So speaking of UP, before I start, uh, I am actually wearing a shirt of special significance. This is the centennial uh, logo yes. of the University of the Philippines. Oh, okay. Because uh, today, yeah. uh, yeah, I mean, two days ago, there was an issue of determination of the UPD and the accord, which means that uh, that we can practice our academic freedom because the police and the military, they don't just enter pasta pasta ang university. We have our own police, uh, the UP police, and the uh, yun nga, no? um, we're very proud of that accord that we were able to forge with the government. Na hindi kayo basta basta pakikialam. You don't just arrest people in our university uh, uh, without uh, proper uh, pre uh, no, proper coordination with the president of the university and all of that. Pero yun na nga, this is being terminated. The context, of course, of that accord is what happened in 1971, which is, was the Diliman Commune, wherein the Diliman Commune exploded because there was uh, the, the, the military searched the dorms, the, the female dorms and the male dorms in UP. They, habang naliligo yung mga tao, kinikwento sa akin ng mga dorms. So, katiragas. So, they all came out in their bathrobes. In New York, ano? and, uh, and of course, the Galing University at the Kabul ng nine day revolt uh, because of that. So, um, yun, yun ang, ano, uh, uh, we're studying. Uh, remember that despite the fact that you are all from La Salle, your students of La Salle, a lot of your professors actually, even if they you, you had undergrad here in La Salle, uh, studied their graduate uh, courses in UP. No? Uh, there's, a, there's a very, you know, proud ng Lasal dito ng UP that they actually have a uh, connection. A lot of your faculty is studied in, in UP. So may, ano kumbaga, may, there's something at stake. And for those of you who pursue graduate studies, a lot of you will go to UP. So, uh, yun ang, ano, I'm wearing this kahit na hindi nakasya sa akin. Uh, lumalabas na yung chan ko sa hilali. But hindi nyo naman yung nakikita. So in the, on the screen, you will see a proud UP shirt rather than an oversized uh, person here. And anyway, uh, I'm very excited. No? I say we're going to our, you know, the we're winding down in a way because classes are ending in uh, in two weeks. But uh, in, in this last few days of our public history course, we actually completed all our, um, all the things that we need to know based on our syllabus. So these are extra classes, extra um, extra sessions in a way, but we are getting some uh, people who practice public history. The first guest that we have had for this class was Lord De Vera. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's not a historian, but he presented history very well through his television programs uh, in which we collaborated, for example, in, in, when we created History with Lord in 2013. Now, this is a unique perspective because this is a perspective that's not so sought after even in public history discourses, which is in a way how to make history relevant in, in a PR sense. Huh? Uh, because remember that a lot of the a lot, lot of historians, a, a lot of uh, what we call this, a lot of practicing history tellers or public history tellers are either historians who are not so savvy about showbiz and all, uh, or young people who are Sobra namang showbiz na nawawala yung saysay ng history. In the, the, yung katauhan ng ating special guest na yun is very fit for a job or a, an, an advocacy na inilalapit ang history without bastardizing it but also in a way that is palatable in a PR sense. Uh, because 
of course, she will tell you a lot about her background. But basically, uh, how I know her is that uh, was that uh, I think she was first and foremost a ano siya, no? um, you were a manager for certain bands and you produce some shows uh, and albums, especially during the time of the Philippine Centennial. There was a, an album called 1896 Ang Pagsila, uh, which uh, in which he, she invited the great bands at that time, like the Eraserheads and all of those bands, and they performed songs which are relevant to, and not necessarily patriotic, na parang, you know, wow, yun po, hindi siya ganun, ano, but these are rock, cool songs, but they talk about the country and they, they, they were able to commemorate the centennial of the Philippine Revolution. At that time, uh, I think naging manager kayo ng The Dawn, that right? Yeah. Yeah. Oo. At nang ano, yung Bamboo, naging manager kayo ng Bamboo. Yes, yes. River Maya, Bamboo. River Maya. Imagine. Oh. So, uh, ano siya, no? Uh, how do you call that? A&R? A&R ba? Ah, well, when you're talking about recording, you talk about A&R, artists and repertoire. Ah, yeah, Artists and repertoire. Yeah. Uh, but also, in a way, she was, uh, meron siyang inclination talaga sa history. Uh, because, yung, uh, of course, you know, among other things, she, wa- she, 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 she is the daughter of one of the most uh, important public historians ever of the Philippines. Diba? Carmen Guerrero Nakpil. Uh, Carmen Guerrero Nakpil used to be the chairperson of the National Historical Institute. And just to tell you, Carmen Nakpil did not receive her salary according to one account that we read. She did not receive her salary. Instead, she donated it back to the National Historical Institute so that the NHI will produce more materials, uh, more readings, more books for uh, distribution uh, about history. Yun yun ang hindi ko makalimutan. Eh. And in fact, I'm so proud I was able to get one book by Carmen Guerrero na Phil here. Actually, hindi niya book ito, but she was the NHEP chair. It's called Kasaysayan. That's right. In which, apparently, Carmen na Phil was able to get a ship no? in order that this ship goes around the country. Tapos sasakay dun yung mga tao para magkaroon ng, you know, makita yung exhibit ng kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. It's a very beautiful book. And the be- I, 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 I can imagine a very beautiful exhibit. So, you have a copy? You want to show it? Ah, yeah, yeah. I have it here. Wait lang, ha? Wait lang. So, it's a giant book uh, <clears throat> about the size of a uh, newspaper. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it's a thumbnail uh, summary of Philippine history from pre-colonial times. It's a very big book if you're yeah. going to look at it. Huh? Like a newspaper, right? Yeah, it's really yes. big. <laughs> very good. Say, yeah, the history of the Philippines. Very people. good condition. And look at the different pictures. See, you know, simple things lang eh. It doesn't have to be complicated when you present public history. The that simple, the, be, the most simple, the better. The diba, may diorama, may documents, may simple narrative. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. At that time, this is, this is, uh, kumbaga, kasi wala pang masyadong colored, colored nun. Mahalang colored. Pero, yun, yeah, mahalang colored. Mahalang colored nun. In fact, newspapers just started putting colored photos, 1990s, 96. Kung di ako nagtama, 95. Mahal na mahal pa nun. Anyway, so, without further ado, this person eventually landed a work at Leon Gallery. No? And at Leon Gallery, which is an auction house, um, dati mga paintings, yan lang ang mga binibenta dyan. And eventually, they started acquiring historical documents. And of course, the beef of the major controversial, of course, is this, uh, uh, should we sell historical documents? Diba? Mamaya pwedeng pag-usapan yan. Uh, but also, um, nakakatuwa yan kasi eventually, of course, um, the government seeing her work very important kasi nakita natin, you know, she does very good research in provenance. You know, you have to prove something 
But this is historical. This is highly valuable. It needs research. It needs asking the right people. It needs that you look at the right documents. And when she writes those articles, well, she may not be a historian in, in an academic sense, but when she weaves a narrative, nasasama na yung PR. No? And it nagiging mas relevant sa tao yung, yung writing. And yung pinaka-joke ko nga kay Liz, Liz na nakili so good, she can sell ice in Alaska. No? Kasi, you know, imagine, how do you sell a, a Bonifacio document, for example? or a Luna item, for example, and in a, in a country na hindi naman mahilig sa kasaysayan ng marami. So eventually, of course, the government saw this work as important. And so uh, a lot of people will, you know, were surprised, but I am not surprised, of course, that she was chosen as commissioner of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines as she now sits in the board of uh, commissioners. So um, before I let her talk to you, I would like to show you a video of, uh, of how, in a way, she tells history through oh, no. her media, through <laughs> ano, coordinating with the media. Okay. So okay. I'll show you a video from ANC before I introduce to you the name of our uh, guest speaker. Ah. Yep, yep. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning show. Can you send me a copy? Oh. It is my great honor and privilege uh, to present to you Commissioner, National Historical Commission of the Philippines, Honorable Lisa Guerrero. Take applause. Thank you, everyone. Uh, but first, uh, what Xiao, uh, how Xiao introduced the subject this morning gives us a clear idea of what the job is of a public historian. It is to provide context for which the, the public, the youth, uh, most especially the youth, can find uh, resonance or uh, engagement which is the right uh, 21st century word, and find a connection to this context. Uh, when my mother was the National Historical Commission chairman, she was actually faced with a dire situation. There was no awareness of Philippine history at the time. In fact, if you can imagine, she was the first to introduce the concept of a history today, you know, like what happened today in Philippine history. She was the first to introduce that from an American and European context. Uh, historians, there was no Shao Chua, there was no Amber Campo, there was no Instagram. You can imagine people were absorbing their history from actually and if we can move now to um, uh, from textbooks, really horribly written textbooks. I don't know if you ever, I think Philippine history was even abolished in your time, in your, mm -hmm. uh, in your youth, but we had to deal with Gregorio Saide uh, as a basic textbook, which was dry, colorless, no pictures whatsoever. And you had to learn history by rote. Uh, beyond that, you know, there were uh, no, in the 1920s, Philippine history was far more alive because the survivors of the Philippine Revolution and the Philippine American <laughs> War were very much alive and could be interviewed. Now they're all gone and, and all these newspapers, they've now become dry as dust. I mean, Chow, can you remember a time when there was even a history column? I think. The first history columns came out during martial law because it was a means to discuss politics without getting arrested. Yeah. So you can imagine um, there were uh, columns like Pilosopong Tasho, which was a <laughs> character from Rizal's Noli. 
there was talk about uh, the Spanish governor generals and the American governor generals and sort of hinting that that is what the Philippines was going through at that time. Uh, visually, if you're familiar with Ben Cab, Ben Cab came out with old photos of the Philippines and created that as art because he wanted to discuss the problems, age-old political and colonial problems through, but without actually bringing up present day people. So, so like yeah. this. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you would just uh, uh, paint something, a photograph from, from the Philippine American War. Pero may patama yan sa present yeah. condition. Yeah. Of course, um, President Marcos uh, was a fan of the Katipunan. And so were his chief communications officers, such as Adrian Cristobal. So, Xiao, maybe you can show them the tragedy of the revolution. And under the Marcoses, there was a big um, explosion of coffee table books dealing with right. the Katipunan, pre-colonial gold. Uh, uh, the, there were so many books that uh, now you can buy actually in mga book sales. And I suggest that you do it. Uh, that was uh, the, 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 the state of history until the 1980s. Right. Uh, at the time, we also had Nick Joaquin, who would do literary historical work, and even uh, Reza Mujeres, who was recently named the, um, the uh, National right. Artist for Literature, historical literature, if I'm not mistaken. So then you would have the advent of uh, the uh, historical columns uh, exem exemplified by Carmen Guerrero Nakpil, Ambeth Ocampo, and of course, Michael Xiaochua. <laughs> now, when my mother started uh, her historical column, that started, uh, move it further. <laughs> it's all the way now in phase two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got something of this. Yeah. Oh, no, go, 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 pa, go, pa, go, pa. Okay. Then, uh, one more, one more with the, not that. And then second phase, one more. There we are. So when my mom started in 1952, actually, uh, she was taking old photos, sort, sort of like Ben Cab, and relating and showing these old photos and um, uh, using that to illustrate the history. So that was the first to use visuals to tie in with history. Then she introduced that history today, and then we have Ambeth Ocampos looking back. Now, like it or not, Ambeth has chosen to use the everyday, the small detail to engage the young, uh, the young audience uh, in history. Oh, well, you know, not to make a no, uh, but if Ambeth is more micro, Xiao actually deals with the macro. So he goes outward. So from example, uh, looking at the, the uh, end of the UP DND pack, he might, he would probably tie that into US and world politics. Yeah. So it's a different kind of attitude. Both are, both are uh, relevant and both have their uses in attracting uh, a wider audience. And I think complementary in, in a way. I look at it as complementary. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Ambeth would walk down the street of New York and look at the covers of the subway, you know, those round things, right? What you would look up at, you know, the context of the Empire State Building. So it's, it, it, it is complementary. Okay. <laughs> Shall we look, go next? Go next. Oh, sorry. So to make history even alive, more alive, there have been created walking tours, uh, uh, re going out to the regions, uh, uh, attracting uh, um, the market outside Metro Manila. Yeah, what's next? Yeah, so now we enter the third phase, which is now, I think, is it the Instagram age? Mm -hmm. Oh, 
TV news. Uh, because of my work in Leon Gallery, we discovered that uh, there is a lot of interest in Philippine history, but it's just been maybe what the word is uh, untapped because people mm -hmm. don't want to read and they prefer to absorb through TV news. So here are examples of when it appeared on Bandila. Um, and you, if you go further, there would be like a uh, TV patrol. Uh, what's next, Shao? And people, and then the newspapers where this does not appear in the op-ed section, but in lifestyle, which is uh, uh, feature. Uh, Possible. Yeah, and then, then you can have photos because in the op-ed section, you can't put photos. That's true. <laughs> then there's also the use of the, as Shao uh, showed, the auctions, the catalogs, the videos, and the publicity or marketing that comes around it. So here we have the Katipunan uh, Decalogo, and yeah. this is an example of the an application form to join the Katipunan. And the Decalogo was in the handwriting of Andres Mipa itself. Yes, yes. So, beautiful handwriting. Beautiful handwriting. Escribiente. Yeah, Escribiente. You think he was an Escribiente? He was more than that. He was like a signed post maker. He was, he was also, he's like a graphic designer. Yeah, yeah. Graphic. <laughs> no, like a billboard. Billboard but, guy. Know, these kids, they don't remember the time when billboards used to be hand painted. I mean, not yes. even created by a computer you know when you have posters no, you don't have posters of films you have like hand, you know, hand painted big big remember, uh, remember billboards huh? you sound like dinosaurs I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so go on yeah so this is the acta no acta de terros yeah with all of the important signatures you can see there's uh, andres bonifacio this is Bonif where's bonifacio yeah. Oh, this is the second page already. So, oh, there's Bonifacio. Yeah, there's there. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this so, one? I yeah. think this is the most expensive, right? Is what, the, what date is this? No. Uh, this is the last letter. This is the last letter or the second to the last? The last. This is the last. Okay, yes. Yeah. yes. The last letter was the most expensive ever. Was yeah. it? Or Aguinaldo? That is, was the Aguinaldo confession or this one? Uh, they were neck to neck. Neck to neck, right? Yeah. yeah. But this is the one of the telegrams that were sent to Luna before he was assassinated. In yeah. which actually, it, uh, Ambet actually corrected us that this was not the one that was made to someone. But it's more important because apparently Luna wrote something here. Yeah. Decoding yeah. the message because yeah. the message was in code. Yes, diba? yes, yes. And so it's still it's, one of those le ano, telegrams given a day before uh, he went to Cabanatua. So, mas ano pa, mas tumakas pa yung value niya. No? Because it was yeah. not just a telegram. Luna said something. Yeah. So hmm. here we find the reach of mm -hmm. our social media. Mm -hmm. So, normally we get something like 3,000 to 6,000 views. Imagine. The next one. Uh, this one is 40,000, the Acta de Tejeros. I think starring you, Xiao. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rizal's letter to Madrid. Uh, in Madrid, from Madrid, 40,000 views. Um, the Murillo Velarde map, because of the relationship to the Western Philippine Sea, 60,000 views. This is the all-time high. The letters of Gregory de Jesus, almost half a million views. Yeah. But you know, mind you, hardly anybody wanted to bid on this. So it's like strange, you know? I mean, what do you think of that? Uh, it's really... Parang, May shadow uh, tragic. Not only, but because Gregory de Jesus is still underrated. Was, is still underrated. Yeah, but the views... Her views is 405,000. Yeah, pero, pero it's not a Bonifacio. Oh my God, the story, the way you weaved it, the way you, not really weave, no, but because the story is there. No? The way we presented it is compelling enough. But does it translate to 
you know, remember the item, very compelling story of the Del Pilar letter? Nobody yeah. bid it on the yeah. Del Pilar letter, yeah. which for me was like, you know, this is, a textbook. Yeah. <laughs> this is a textbook story of Marcelo Del Pilar himself telling her, you know, his, his wife, na I am already picking up cigarette butts here just to live. Yeah. You see? So that was that letter. And it did, nobody beat it. I was there. I was there. Yeah. I think, sabi ko nga, after that, I did not want to go into actual auctions anymore, Ma'am Lisa. I did not tell you this. But after, after when all of those items, nobody bidded on them, parang ang sakit pala. Parang nasasaktan ako. So parang, I will not, makikibalita na lang ako. Sabi ko, I, 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 I'll, I'll go to Lisa to see the documents, to check on them, to get photographs. I'll ask photographs from them. Pero yung auction, babalitaan ko. Kasi when you're in the auction itself, it's really yung, yung race, kahit hindi ikaw participant, even if you're not bidding on them. As a historian, you're racing eh, yung nag-race yung heart mo. So na, ah, no, mabibenta kaya ito. Can you tell your experience when you accompanied Robin Padilla to bid on the letters? <laughs> oh yeah, yung letter of Pudif. <laughs> that, those are the two, your class. <laughs> the two times I was there, no? uh, na, I'll share it now. Ah. So, yeah. there was yeah. a controversy was it here? Ah, this is this one. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Yes, yes. That's the one. That auction. No, but there were like four letters. Four, four letters. Four letters, yeah. Four last letters of Andres Bonifacio. No? Four letters and one envelope. Yeah. Oh, April 26, 27. Oh, no. 16, 26, 27. Mm -mm. Three letters. And what happened was, um, there was a controversy because of that. Kasi there was fear from people who love Bonifacio that he is someone who wants to destroy evidence against Aguinaldo will buy the document and burn the damn thing. So the starting bid for most of the letters is 500,000. So there was an issue now. Why does the government not buy these things? Huh? And of course, the government were bound by COA rules. They cannot just buy... So people wanted to buy the document just for it to be saved, supposedly, from these people. So these are very well-meaning people. And Robin Padilla was there to bid. Uh, and may mga bidders then na nag-usap-usap to go there. I was with the relative of Andres Bonifacio. I, I will not disclose her name. Who was also watching. And what happened was... Because the bidding was, nung, nung ito, for example, these letters were bidding. Nag-uusap na yung si, kinakausap na si Robin na, oh, maghati tayo. Let's, <laughs> let's merge our 2 million, 2 million so we can buy this. Pool of funds, yeah, pool of funds. Oh, oh pool of funds and all of that. And, of course, some of the mo, yung mga more experienced uh, bidders will not attend the bidding itself. They will call. <laughs> so, a, 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 a caller one in that no no one uh, some uh, some uh, of the number of those letters of course there is a an tawag don yung privacy clause that leon gallery cannot disclose whoever won uh pero yun na nga uh, and then of course uh, sad yung sad si na robin and all of that but you know i tell you something ma'am lisa and i wrote this in a column one of the relatives of bonifacio the one who was with me very close one na talagang masakit sa kanya yung nangyari kay Bonifacio kahit 120 years ago na. Yes. When the letter was bidded, and when the letter pitched such a high price, I think 4 million plus, or yes. almost yes. 5 million. Yes. Yeah, almost 5 million. Para siyang nakawala, parang ang tingin niya daw, nakawala na si Bonifacio. Those letters yeah. spelled him. his gave doom. Him, uh, gave him the final importance. Correct. Those letters spell this doom that when they were auctioned, parang closure siya because naging importante yung kwento ni Bonifacio. I was crying actually when I was writing that. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah. So instead of yung noon, nagsasabi na, di ba, yung iba, parang siya sabi, no, yeah, this is this, 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 this pleasure to, and this is the service to Bonifacio because you're commercializing it. But again, but again remember that this letters are private property. And if government will just get them for a low, low price without appraising their value in a sense, that's tantamount to a martial law 
di ba? Uh, confiscation of property. Mm-hmm. We do not want, if, if a private property is yours, then the government should buy it if they want to buy it. Mm-hmm. If anyone should buy it. Di ba? I, I mean, I still, kaya nga hindi ako komunista, eh, although I sympathize with their ideals. <laughs> I, I do not believe that when, when something is yours, you, the government can just get it. Di ba? The, the government should give you just compensation. Di ba? So, yun, yun ang sagot ko dun sa issue na yun. I might not agree that you know, these things will go to private hands just because, you know, the government cannot buy it. That's sad. But what can we do? This is, this is a private property and the owners of these letters can, dis, uh, can dispose of this property, whatever they want. Well, uh, um, I can also add, if you take a look at the screen, you can see that, um, you know, there are holes in it. That's true. That it's put together by tape. So the bidders are advised that apart from what you, of course, we did not advise Robin Padilla because he was a surprise bidder. If you, would, <laughs> if you wish to bid for this, you have to add maybe an additional one to two million pesos for the conservation. One to two million, huh? Yeah, because you're gonna, you're, the, I know that the collector uh, has been consulting with the uh, top, you know, the people who handle George Washington's letters in the U.S. and the Declaration of Independence. So I've seen the report, I mean, the quotation of how they want to yes. preserve it. And they're going to have to dip it in some kind of bath, you yeah. know, to stop the degradation. Because the ink that Bonifacio used had a lot of iron. So you can see eventually that ink will eat the paper. So in a way, it's like laminating it. Pero no, hindi siya lamination. And then, uh, of course, first you have to document it properly. So right. no matter if you lose the letter for whatever reason. It's uh, there. It's still there. Mm-hmm. The contents are still there. Wow. Well, so, you know, you know, this is also the issue, Mama, no? that is the government a good custodian of these kinds of things. Kasi di ba, we all know that there was theft in the National Library in the 1960s. Di ba, the Noli Metangere and the El Filibus Turismo was stolen with the Mule de Modios. Uh, we all know that a lot of neglect is happening in some of the gover- government documents that we have had. No? So parang, there's also a question that what if the private sector is a better custodian of such documents? That's true because I I understand the archives are more than 150,000 documents. Mm-hmm. But that's not to say that we are no longer a third world country. There is enough funding right. to, to preserve these documents. But can you imagine picking and choosing? Well, of course, this is an obvious choice. Uh, <laughs> between the, among the 150,000 documents. <laughs> So you would have first to document them, in fact, um, digitize these documents? In fairness to the National Archives, they have digitized uh, a lot of their documents. It, it's just the re- it's, there's a contention, of course, that while they're digitizing the documents, the, before the pandemic, they, were, they have to close uh, some of the, 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 the archives in such a way, close in a sense that you need, you need to wait a lot of months just to you know to to access a document and to get the scans. Well, in fact, when when people were can easily just go to the archives, they can just get a box and you know pick a document there and read it. That that's the problem. But but the di- digitization, in all fairness to the National Archives, has already started. What I do not know is that if the, we already digitize, the most important documents are not with the National Archives. The most important. Documents of Our Heroes is actually with the National Library yeah. Rare Manuscript Section, which is in the Filipiniana section. Nandun lahat. Nandun Rizal, Gregorio del Pilar. Lahat nandun. Yung No Limit Angere LP, Mi Ultimo Adios. Nandun. Dec- the Declaration of Independence was there. Is there. So, um, and don't, ang hindi ko alam kung na-digitize nyo. So, I, I think I have to ask that. I think I'm writing a letter because I want to visit the Noli for a certain document that I am making with the Senator Loren Nagamda. So uh, I might visit the National Library of Manuscripts and, and ask them if they were able to do that. 
And yun, yun. And then another siguro ako for example, the most important thing that this Mamlisa I mean, I just have to tell this story because this is quite interesting. You know, I, I thought I thought Lisa Nakpil was the socialerang mataray. Sa totoo lang. Parang when, when I first met you, I, I tell you this, this is like, I, I'm going to disclose this to you. Actually, Ma'am Lisa, sa takot ko sa'yo, iniiwasan nga kita when I go to Leon Gallery. And, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true, that's true. Nung yung mga una kong punta doon, parang, ay, parang, parang masyadong sosyal. Uh, and 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 parang baka dumugo yung ilong ko sa kaka-ingles ganun and all of that and then sabi kong ganyan na and then parang there was a time na you know uh, na, wala ka nga doon and then you said eh, parang, ah bago dumating si Lisa aalis na ako kasi baka dumugo na naman yung ilong ko and all eh, and then you know you and then sa your staff said no ma'am Lisa really wants to see you uh, and then sabi na touch ako di, di I waited and then you came and And then it was so fun to just talk to you. <laughs> wow, you know, it is far from what I expected, you know. And 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 you know, you really you have I don't know, you were in touch. In fact, as I as I will tell you, students, the please I give ever that feel is more in touch with present day pop culture than myself. <laughs> Why not? Why are you so surprised? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, eventually you will know that. She was part show business uh, in a way, but you know, and 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 now we're collaborating. We're, we're I mean, with the with just mere talking to each other and sharing ideas and sharing pieces about the historical community, we're <laughs> in a way helping each other in our agenda to push for more initiatives ng magkaroon ng public history and uh, may may access to Lisa Nakpil. Because remember. Ambeto Kapos says this very important thing. The most important thing for a historian is not really your, in in a way, not really your intelligence. And this is true. Your intelligence will not save you. The historian is saved by access. If you have access to documents, yan ang key for a historian to be able to write a narrative. So how do you have access pag inaway mo ang lahat? So imagine, ganito yan eh. I already expressed this. I may not, I may not be comfortable with auctioning documents, but we cannot do anything because by law this is private property and the owners can dispose of it, whatever they want. Okay? But, sabi ko, if yawain ko ang Leon Gallery at yawain ko ang lahat ng tao na hindi ako nag-agree with, how about access? The good thing about my friendship with Lisa Nakti is that, and Leon, of course, uh, Leon, uh, uh, si Sir Leon, the, the owner of the gallery, is that I am able to see the documents. I'm not an expert on anything. This is not for me to verify these documents or, 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 or whatever, but just to see them before they're being sold. Just to see them before, take photographs, ask for good scans from Lisa, Diba? Kahit mawala na yung dokumento na yan, historians can now ask me, diba? and I can share, and it's okay with Leon, to share this document to serious historians. And this is, ito nga yung sinasabi ko, ang papel na yan, mawa, pwedeng mawala yan. Ang, papel, yeah. ang mga bagay, pwedeng masunog eh. But when you give access to people, to history, which if Leon did not have this kind of auction, these documents will not come out. If we did not have the high prices, that's we why not come. The, the, the documents started to appear. The documents just started popping out in in Leon, and 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 we're able to see them. The telegram. Nobody knew that there was a telegram existing. Yeah, or we diba? had letters, but we never actually saw it. Diba? Man, <laughs> those letters are already in facsimile, but to see them, I I saw all. The works of Emilio Asinto in one bundle. All the works. Lahat yung pinagbabasa lang na sa li- pinapakita lang sa libro ni, ni Epifanio de los Santos at Jose P. Santos. You see the handwriting. I was able to take pictures. Lisa gave me good scans. This, kaya yun yung sinasabi ko na remember, sometimes you can be right. But being nice 
<laughs> being nice and building bridges rather than burning them, connecting people, connections, is important for a public historian. Now, if you have a scholarly historian, then go ahead. You can go, go to the archives. I'm not saying that that is bad. That's the most important thing ever. But I tell you, the archives is not just the only source of history. That's the problem. There are private collectors whom you should contact. So the public history is also about social true. skills. Very true. Very true. Social skills. Diba? I'm sorry, Mama. I know this is your time, but... No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is a this good is, interaction. This is what I'm saying, no? Na Invaluable if, for your students. <laughs> if I'm an obnoxious person, who, because I know I'm right, I'll attack Lisa and I'll attack Leon. Diba? And it's in on talo. Who would be the loser? But we have the documents. We can see them. They are photographed. They're, they're now documented and all. Very clear scans for us to see. Jim Richardson was able to appraise these documents. He's the, he's the expert on the Katipuna. Because lumabas. So there's a good thing that happened here. Kaya nga, ang, this is what I'm telling you all. Open-mindedness is important. Uh, never go to the extremes. This is what happened to America now. Connect natin sa US politics na yun. We, America is divided at nagkakagulo doon because both the left and the right are antagonizing each other by pushing the extreme left and the extreme right agenda. Always go in the mean. If you want to be a public historian and if you want to be a pleasant human being, not an obnoxious one, always be in the mean. Always be. You have stand. Be clear with who you are. Diba? Ako, I'm a protestant. Kasabihin ko, I do not believe in images, but I respect the Nazarene. That's why I'm studying the Nazarene. Diba? It's not selling your soul. It's just respecting other people. Diba? I'm sorry, but you know, this oh, is like oh, life oh. lessons that we can see, we, we, can, we can learn by, you know, by looking at the actual way that public history is being uh, practiced here in the Philippines. So you know, this is very beautiful. Ngayon ko lang din nasabi. Good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. Ah, so there it is. So this is a sort of like a a fancy economic way of saying the consumption of history is like any economic commodity. We must adapt, adapt and adapt <laughs> to whatever the current distribution channels are. Um mm -hmm. And using whatever means, sometimes even showbiz, like uh, Shao laughs at me comparing Jose Rizal at the time of the Gerald Anderson blow up, you know, about being, uh, you know, uh, having girlfriends. But this is something that Filipinas respond to, eh? yung love life, yung LQ, yung, di ba? Right. Ghosting and whatever. Yeah. So I also wanted to add, uh, the reason why I came up with the Centennial album, album. Yeah. was because there was a there was a there was a refusal of the NHCP and the national government to even commemorate the 1896 revolution. They preferred to focus on 1898, and despite right. my arguments that this would be like celebrating. Uh, Thomas Jefferson without recognizing George Washington. Washington. They, they, they really refused. So the, the 1896 centennial celebration was purely a private sector initiative. Right. Uh, the, for the same reasons that they don't, didn't want the state funeral, they also did felt that once you go talk about Bonifacio and the revolution, you automatically move towards the trial and the murder of Bonifacio, which again, they felt was quite divisive. I myself feel that unless we um, address, you know, or bring closure to these uh, issues of Aguinaldo and Bonifacio, it will be just like a wound that will never be healed. And like it or not, it is part of our Philippine history. Uh, still, a lot of people felt that um, Philippine history is very personal, personalistic. Right. And it would injure the many influential descendants of Emilio Aguinaldo. Right. So there. 
So, if you're going to look at it, ha? Sige. If you look at it in terms of modern day Instagram, there is such a thing as yung beef, di ba? So, there's a feud that really sparks the interest of people online. So, you have the makings of a very interesting, you know, like uh, versus versus of uh, Aguinaldo versus Bonifacio. Makes it interesting. I think it will make Philippine history even more interesting. And uh, that's the reality, talaga, na if you're going to look at, you know, if I post something about, you know, the profile of this um, unknown Filipino hero, nobody responds to it. Unless you give a very, very, very impressive, for example, um, story about it, like Patrocinio Gamboa, who's that Pokemon, right? But if you look at the story of Patrocinio Gamboa, the, the woman uh, hero from Iloilo, that's a fantastic story. But you have to present it. How do you present that story in three minutes or less? That's what Shao Times uh, tried to do with a lot of those biographies. Yeah, that's diba? true. So, yeah, kasi, yan ang I mean, I'm just receiving, for example, comments from online students in my YouTube channel, YouTube, YouTube channel, when we talk uh, that, 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 uh, that is, uh, that, uh, that uh, talks about Miguel Malvar, kasi pinarequire daw ng kanilang teacher. You know, this is, this is really public history problem. Ah. The people who tell you that this was hidden history. Correct. I but do not believe that nobody, there was ever a hidden yeah. history. Yeah. All history are already revealed. Yeah. yeah. You just did not read it. <laughs> but for those people who, na parang sinasabi na, oh, hindi ko nalaman yan, therefore itinago sa akin. At sasabihin sa inyo, itinago sa inyo ng mga istorya doon ako itong ito. Kalukuhan nyo. That, it, 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 hindi ganun yan. That's marketing. Marketing na yan. When, when people do yeah. the Revelations. Yes. Oh, yung mga ganyan. Uh, in, in fairness to Leon Galloway, because Lisa is there, they're not doing that. Yeah. Hindi naman nila sinabi na this is the first time you saw the deathbed. The death. Hindi naman, hindi naman sinabing deathbed confession yun. But, you know, there's a confession of Aguinaldo. No? Of course, you... you some people object to the use of the word confession because, you know, it was a written testimony. But, you know, it's its perspective. And, so to lang, all history are hidden to you because you were born before everything happened. Yeah. And there's a new, for example, if I teach you, kung may, kunwari, kaya nga sinasabi nila ng mga ibang historians, si Shao Chua, yung historian na yan, wala namang bagong sinasabi yan. Now, I'm not hurt anymore. Because wala talaga akong bagong sinasabi. Pero, no, the facts are the ko, but the context is new. Pag sinabi ko, yung kwento ni Bonifacio, sinabi ko na yan 10 years ago. Pero pag kinwento ko yan sa inyo ngayon, di ba, nakakapangalak nyo lang, bago yun. It yes. will always be new. That's why in many ways, history will always be new. It is history, even if it is from old things, is eternally new. Yeah. Because of the new, always the new generation being born. Ayan, ah, quotable quote yan, ah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, history is always Luna. eternally new. Yeah, Henry Luna. It's like, um, Henry Luna is based on uh, on Vivencio Jose and the, all of the research of the, what, 1970s, right? Right. It's, 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 there's nothing new in Henry Luna and Goyo. The, alam na mga historians niya. But Do you think if, it was John Arcelia that made Henry Luna or was it the story? Ah, you were talking about uh, if, well, of course, I'll tell you something. Malaki yung role ni John. Malaki yung role ni John. Yeah, I really yeah. believe that. I was a little yeah. surprised. Somebody was talking to me about it a couple of days ago, and I thought it was the story of Luna that was compelling. But he said, no, it was the acting. It was the persona that Arcelia presented that was so sympathetic. Imagine the Goyo, even if well played naman ni, ni I like ano, Goyo. Ni, I like Goyo. I like Goyo too. But even if it's well played by Paolo Avellino, I think very Goyo yung style niya. Because it was not raunchy, it was not too colorful, uh, like 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 John Arcilla. Parang ang nangyari, hindi rin, yung not as appreciated as General Luna. That's quieter, yeah. yeah. He should have made, uh, he should have made um, Gregorio uh, the pillar more glamorous, more swag. Yeah, more swag, more That's swag. True. I mean, in, in the terminology of. I think things. it's it's uh it was Arcelia's portrayal that made the movie. That's true. I I believe so. 
I believe so. Uh, yung the way he laughs, the way he delivers. You know, those lines can be delivered by anyone, by myself, and it will not have the same effect as Channel C. Di ba? Parang, ano? Ibang yeah, bansa na ba ang kabite? Ibang bansa na ba ang kabite? Di ba? Yung the way he puts those lines. Ah! Oh, Wait, you have questions for Lisa Nakpil or do you have comments? Questions. If there are questions. If there are questions or they're just listening, uh, I hope you're not asleep. Ano? This is a very, very interesting discussion with Ma'am Lisa. It's like, you know, every time I go to Leon Gallery, Lisa Nakpil will order our star. It's very simple. Ah? Coke in can and Starbucks uh, and Saimana. It was the most <laughs> beautiful conversations. Diba? That, that that I ever had. So, meron akong new discovery for after the pandemic. Sisig Sotanghon. Huh? It, it, it's near Leon? Yeah. <laughs> mm. And then on top is it's crunchy sisig. Patay ka niya. Oh, no. You have to take our ano, lipitor. <laughs> Ayan, so we look, for, we look forward. Ha? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Do you still go to office uh, this pandemic? Yeah, How's Leon going? Good, good, because it's a huge area. It's actually safe to go. You know, it's like 350 square meters with three people there. It's pretty safe. I'm judging. I'm judging the Quincentennial Art Contest soon. Oh, good. February. So I'm going. I'm bound to go to Manila anyway. Yeah, so there's... one time I'll visit you. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me know. <laughs> but there are some good pieces in the in the art contest. Oh, really? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Let's. I'm going to I'm going to talk to you about it. Hmm. Any questions? Do you have? Uh, do you want to uh, say your? Makameron ka yung comments. Do you? Chat. These are these are not just history majors. They're because this is a minor course. They're both the uh, they're mixture of history majors and also yung mga ibang tao. Are there so, any of them who are actually interested in becoming public historians? Oh, meron ba yan? That's a that's a good question. Meron bang people who are actually interested and maybe you can tell us something about you know how how do you think you envision yourself doing public history para mala makita natin kung feasible anyone sige magtatawag ako ha yeah si the president of the sociedad de historia uh, of la sala uh, gabriel gabriel what, what what do you see yourself how do you see yourself um Sir, I actually I'm not quite sure yet with what I want after um college because um I'd like to go into history then, but I'm I don't know if I'd go academic or as um you said public history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I were to go to public history, but I'd like to focus more on food. Oh, like my friend Feliz Podente Santa Maria. Yes, yes. Do you follow her on Facebook or Instagram? You should. On Instagram po. Diba? It's very interesting. Very I tell you an anecdote, ano? and I think uh, Phyllis will not mind me te me will not mind will not mind me telling you this. I, I have a little pride in myself of uh, helping Phyllis Pudente Santa Maria go really? out in the open in public history. Wow. Remember, no? Feliz Pudente Santa Maria was already a public historian even before I was born. Uh, except that, if you're going to look at the past few years, she was, you know, parang hindi siya masyadong visible online. Yeah. No? Her yeah. books are there, pero hindi siya masyadong visible online. And then parang, you know, I started to contact her, you know, parang takot pa ako. Like, you know, it's like Lisa Nakpil. You know, I have a, I have fear with social people eh. Because, you know, I came yeah, from the right. provinces and, you know, as you see me, I'm very back. Yeah, no? Mesio Prudente. Yeah, exactly. Apparently, I did not know that. I did not know that. The, 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 the before, ah, before, ah, the, just a few months ago, ko nalaman during the pandemic, that the socialerang Feliz Prudente Santa Maria ay anak ng PUP president and patriot ni Mesio yes. Prudente. Yes. Diba? So, anyway, whatever it, was, it is, no, uh, Feliz Prudente Santa Maria, um, parang, she saw the work of the young people. It's like Gemma Cruz also, you know, your half-sister, uh, Gemma Cruz Araneta, yeah, appreciating yeah. the work of the young people into the young historians today, like Jan Ray Ramos. And, you know, I'm sorry, I, I cannot mention the other names. Jan Ray is a friend of mine uh, and a co-author the Bonifacio book. 
But yeah. uh, basically, um, Feliz Prudente Santa Maria, in a way, got inspired with what the young people are doing, propagating history in social media. And like what Lisa Nakpil said in the conclusion, whatever is the mode of distribution in today, today, yun ang gagamitin dapat ng historian. So kung Instagram, diba, TikTok, I tried, but I cannot do it. If you can do TikTok, do it. Because the Mampos apologists are in TikTok already. Really? So, yes. You have to do TikTok if you're right. I, I have no patience doing it. I mean, just seeing people in TikTok ticks me off. Uh, so uh, that means I'm old. I'm 37. I turned 37 yesterday. So I'm old. Ooh, so happy so, birthday! Thank you. So yeah, yun, yun, yun ang sinasabi ko sa inyo. So if you can do TikTok now, of course there are other things that you can promote history. And in the DFA, for example, we have a lot of history majors going to the Department of Foreign Affairs because. If you're a history major, one natural thing to do is to be a diplomat. Because the knowledge of history, if you're a diplomat, is very, ano yan, very important. Yan. Now, if you're a Muslim and you want to be a diplomat, mas may alas ka. Because we need a lot of Muslim diplomats in Muslim yes, countries. Yes, yes, so yes. you will get accepted no, easily. Um, sa ano, DFA exam. Rizal now all over the world? This yes. could be something that would interest them. Oh yeah, there's Centro Rizal which is all the embassies in the in the world, Philippine embassies in the world, they have central results wherein the Filipinos and foreigners who are interested with Philippine history are, uh, no, can go. So para siyang in a way, little institute in our embassies. embassies. And then sometimes they invite people yeah, they to talk. Yeah, they invite historians to talk. They invited this one. I, I, was, I was invited by the British embassy. Really? Oh, no, sorry, by the Philippine embassy in Britain. The problem is I cannot do it because of a very big prior commitment with the NCCA. Oh, so no. it's either so it was it should have been my first. I gave it I gave the opportunity to Victorious. And I, I learned eventually that Ambeto Campo actually recommended me. Sana. But of course I cannot do it. But Victorious, I think, deserves it. You know, first trip abroad, apparently, with Victorious. Oh, so, I mean, I'm still young, and eh? she's already he's, he's 50, he's a golden boy. So uh, I I I'm just so happy to give this slack to him. But uh yun, yun ang ano diyan, yun ang yun ang yun ang sinasabi ko sa inyo na uh, there are things that you can do na hindi lang his academic. No? There's a in the DFA has a strong tradition of publishing yung mga foreign service institute students nila, yung mga natanggap na sa exam tapos na the training. They are able to produce uh, coffee table books on history. Uh, may ganun silang parang training. That the, the knowledge of history, the study of history will give you uh, gives you wide opportunities in politics, in uh, foreign relations, uh, LGUs, community. In the art. In, art, in the yeah. art world. Can you tell us something about the art world? I mean, anything that might interest future public historians who want to go to Art history. Oh, that's a tough question. How to, <laughs> how to, well, you know, the, the art world is quite uh, educated and they love research. So, for example, the most expensive painting world, Philippine painting worldwide is still one Luna's Espana y Filipinas. Oh, so, yeah. to be able to understand that you would need history, not just art history. You need to know the context of the painting and the painter and the political situation at the time. The second, uh, the most expensive painting that was sold locally is Jose Hoya's <laughs> Space Transfiguration, which I would was have, there. Yeah, which I was there when it was auctioned. Yeah, which would have been part of the first time that the Philippines went to the Venice Biennale. Wow. So all of this, you will find, has some connection to history, social, political, and art. So it's something that you could really focus on as a career and using, of course, the 21st century tools, which you are very familiar with. That's true. That will give you a leg up, definitely. It is important when you do, you know, um, you, when you do appraisal for art is the knowledge of provenance, which of course your skills in research 
is very much needed. Yung mga pagtatanong what's primary, secondary source and all of that. Provenance means that, you know, na you are able to trace kung kanino nagpasa-pasa ang isang artwork. Yeah, yeah. From yes. the original uh, painter. Kasi yeah. kapag nawala, pag, if you cannot find the provenance, there's no value. Pwedeng, pwedeng, I mean, if, unless they can, it can be appraised by some experts that these are brush strokes of a certain painter, uh, but the provenance gives the case better. Yes, yes. Yeah, di ba? Uh, it would not be so much an issue of a so-called conflict of interest, but really an issue of the time. Because from what I see, it's a really, it's a job 24-7. My God, yung chair, I just realized. Because the, you know, in a way, you have little dreams of, you know, being chairman of the NHCP. But it's not an academic, it's not an academic position, apparently. No? Well, I would like, I mean, uh, it's difficult to become visionary when you have to see the forest, when you have to deal with the trees. That's and true. a lot of the board's, um, the board's work is dealing with trees. That's true. But That's there's true. no way around it. You, right. you need to you need to deal with the trees. A lot of politics. Because <laughs> you ask budget from the senators. The NHCP asks budget from the senators. And if the senators did not like your historical agenda, mm. uh-huh. so yeah, uh, we ganun. <laughs> so anyway, whatever that is, eh, 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 like yeah. at the end of the day, you cannot say that he's too Catholic. Oh, history can history will always be tied with politics. Yeah, you always. can try to be fair. You can try to be fair, but you cannot be. I don't know. Can you be neutral? No. Impossible. 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 But you can be fair. I'm. I'm not neutral for the Marcoses. I'm against the Marcoses. I'm against what they stood for, which is strongman rule and all of that. But I can give credit to Imelda in my thesis for some of the things that she did. And I can give credit to Marcos for the initiatives of electrification of the country and all the infrastructure which we needed. Yeah. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. You have to be fair. You, even if you're... I, say, I think that's the... I mean, this is the major life lesson part of our discussion, you know, is that when you look at it, in the, in, the, in, the, in the long run, the way we deal with other people is also the way we deal as public historians with the stakeholders, which is have your stand, have your analysis, be truthful to the analysis that you have of any historical document or narrative. Mm. But in order for your um, narrative to be acceptable, para maging katanggap-tanggap siya sa lahat, parehas ka dapat. Which means you try to show the other side. You have you have a judgment. You, you yes. probably did not yeah. believe everything, but when you present the other side and also give something to them, like that's also what I do with Aguinaldo. I I, I am pro Bonifacio, obviously, but when I talk about the Aguinaldo ex- the Bonifacio execution, I also present the side of Aguinaldo and give him the benefit of the doubt that he really wanted to stop the execution, except that the two generals were able to convince him to do it. But he is in the end he was responsible because in the end he gave in. Agita Aguinaldo gave in to the general. Talagang, kumbaga, she, he, and, he, and, and in a way, he, he is responsible for it. Kasi he's the top. Okay, the buck stops here, kumbaga. Yeah, yeah. So, he, it doesn't he, change anything. <laughs> I gave Aguinaldo something, but it doesn't change anything. He was still, uh, he was still a very big part of it. So, yun, um, you know, you, know, you 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 when you are fair, because I think some of the DDS people who are not rabid, and some of the Marcos people who are not rabid actually appreciate you. Because uh, in a way, I am not I am giving something. For example, Duterte, I give Duterte some of the good things that he, he is doing now, diba? But I I remain to be a critic of the president, especially the very big issues like human rights. Yeah, yeah. So, All right. All right. in looking at history, it's still the same. Ganon de, be fair. Be fair. Yun ang importante dyan. And, uh, ikokonek ko yung doon sa na, na, nangyari, na, doon sa kinikwento ko kanina about, you know, not antagonizing everybody. That's a way to not antagonize everyone. 
People Correct. know that I am against the mafas and I am a critic of Duterte. But a lot of these people who are DDS actually list, are listening to me. Yeah? Yun yung nakita ko na parang that's the virtue of it. I did not so sell my soul. Diba? <laughs> but, and remember that the Quincentennial, for example, is a Duterte administration project. Yes. But I am helping them because at least, and this, this is my this is my honest assessment of the Quincentennial, is that at least the Duterte government is not doing, is not making it a propaganda tool. Uh, kasi ang naging focus talaga ng Quincentennial is really history and promoting victory and humanity and, and, and connecting it with all that happened in the past 500 years to us. Mm-hmm. Correct. So, in all fairness, that's why I'm helping. I'm helping them. And I'm talking to RTVM. The work of the public historian becomes more effective, I believe, when you create bridges and create connections rather than burning them. And because when you when you create connections, when I am and I will now connect what Ambed said, open access. People open up to you. It's also what I did with the Nazareno in my dissertation, Black Nazarene. When the devotees saw that I, when I go to DZMM or I went to AB, I go to ABS-CBN, that I respect their perspective of the Black Nazarene devotion and do not call them fanatics. <laughs> when I, they see me in Kiapo, they open up to me. Yeah. They open up to me because they saw respect. Now, I'm not saying that I'm the ultimate, the perfect public historian. I have missteps. I'm not always right. I, I, when I'm called out, I really admit that I am, I am wrong, which there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But uh-huh. I believe na, and I'm not totally adept with it. I'm old. You know, Lisa Dakpil is more adept with, with what the young people are thinking and the technology. I cannot even edit my own videos. That's the problem. <laughs> I should have. It's a 21st century skill. Even if you're not a, a scholar, diba? you need to edit videos. So please, know how to edit videos. Pag-aralan nyo na ngayon pala. It's a 21st century skill that, uh, that I lack. So, but, you know, we, we, we make do with what we have. We cannot really force ourselves to be who we, we are not. But be yourself. That's one also thing about um, public history is that when you tell a story, hindi pa rin nalalayo dun sa personality mo, sa interest mo. Lisa Nakpil, uh, despite the fact that she changed careers diba, from being <laughs> now from being an A&R and you know and a showbiz person now to becoming a public history teller and a commissioner at that the National Historical Commission of the Philippines the way she tells the history and the way she uh, approaches public history and the initiative in her initiatives hindi nalalayo sa personality niya same with me so if you're not bubbly do not try to be one just tell it as you 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 can tell it. Mm-hmm. You know, there there are probably other ways that you can do, but you have to explore things. I I you know I'm not a speaker instantly. Hindi ako you know when I listen to my old lectures in 2011, for example, I hate how I speak. Mabilis, nagmamadali, matinis na voices. But I'm not taking time. Parang now, parang now I am able to relax and say these things in a very slow manner uh, yeah, and yeah. very clearly. Kasi dati pag ganito, eh, nagmamadali ako lagi, kaya kapag ganito ako magkwento, di ba? Para akong si Black Nine. Si Black Nine, hindi mo ba naging, ano, yung, naging artist doon? No. Kasi, <laughs> po, I remember I was in the rock world. By the way, in rock, you don't say showbiz. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because rock is uh, antithetical to showbiz. That's true. That's showbiz true. is more like pop. So showbiz would be like uh, Sharon Cuneta, Vilma, Sarah Geronimo. Okay. Salamat. Oh. I had a conversation with my mom before she died. And she felt quite demoralized about the fate of public history. Wow. History for the young. She felt that all of her work in the National Historical Commission, that Kasai Sayan, the ship, the columns, the books, the talks, would not come to anything. 
And I told her, you know, mom, you're always so <laughs> negative. <laughs> think about it. If you compare the Philippines to the, to the highly developed countries like in France and Great Britain, even the Americas, they, their history spans of their, when they became independent, spans more than 200, 300 years. While for the Philippines, which is what I told my mom, we only formally gained independence, what, Shao, 75 years ago, right? Yes. So to throw in the towel uh, is premature. And especially when I see all of your students, whether or not they continue into a career of public history um, and the interest in the auctions, in the IG, in the Facebook videos, your own followers show, there is no reason for uh, disappointment or desperation. I think that the future will really belong to the youth because they now have technology on their side which we didn't really have. I mean, we were relying on cassettes and CDs and That's true. You know, uh, now they have General Luna. Who would have thought that General Luna would become famous? That's uh, true. And as loved as even, a, not naman as same last as Rizal or Bonifacio, but he was, he entered, he became a pop phenomenon, right? That's true. And with, you know, uh, bayan or di ba? Bayan or Savini. Yeah. yeah. And I think the good thing about it is that I think uh, who would have thought in a way that Lisa Guerrero Nakpil ANR di ba, would be Commissioner of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. It's the same commission that your mother headed and that you know if she despaired about the plight of public history when before she died, I think that uh, there is a compelling reason why the Lord uh, placed you there to continue the work of your mother. And uh, in many ways, I will always be with you in uh, that. Uh, and I, if, if whatever help I can do, as long as I can do it, as long as my capacity can do it, I, I will always be here. Yes, thank you so much. That's very important. Thank you. No, very and, significant. And thank you for listening to all of uh, to our conversation and, and and thank you for I know that you are with me in spirit but guys thank you so much uh, uh, for being here and for yes, thank you. Uh, for, you for joining us at nine o'clock in the morning <laughs> right kaya nakakatamad talaga but you know we, we we make do with what we have but thank you so much again again as I always say after class live each day one at a time do not take yourself too seriously goodbye now and God love you I'm um, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. This was fun, guys. This was fun. Thank Bye. you.